how do you implement a small microcontroller into managing a few traffic lights? In this video, you're going to watch how it is done. Hi, this is Judy Tova. You are in TechZorro, where you learn, do, and improve technology. Multiplexing optimizes the control of sequential hardware. It is scalable when it is used with a few or many items. Since each sequence have equal operation, it is preferred for driving electronics such as LEDs, 7-segment displays, and, well, traffic lights. Today you are going to learn how to assemble traffic lights in the breadboard. You're also going to watch a brief summary of the schematics and the code. Let's see how it works. Here is a list of components and devices required for this tutorial. And here are tools and machinery also required. A breadboard, a PIC kit for programming them, PIC microcontroller, an AC-DC adapter, and many jumper cables. This is the schematic of the multiplexing of traffic lights. First of all, you have to connect the PIC kit with the PIC microcontroller. First, the master clear connector. Second, the power source, the positive one, the negative one, the data cable and the clock cable. You have to assign to these two pins the RTC or the real-time clock and the two grounded 15 picofarad to the ground. RC4, RC5 and RA2 has been assigned to manage the red, yellow and green color respectively. And P1 to P4 all the way to P4 is in charge to turn on these transistors via the 1K or 10K transistor, a uh, resistor. P1 controls T1, the T1 transistor, P2 the T2 transistor and so on. And above you can find the red, yellow and green data buses. For example, in this sequence, the first transistor is turned on and only activates the red light, while the remain transistors are turned off. Therefore, no other light is visible. The next step in the sequence now turns on the second transistor and activates the yellow and green color, while the rest of the transistor and lights are turned off. This means that for a short period of time, the second traffic light are going to display the green and yellow color. Similarly, third traffic light is turned on and displayed the, the corresponding colors, and the same goes for the fourth traffic light. Multiplexing happens so quickly that you will not be able to notice any blinking. Alright, so here is the program which is done in MPLAB 10. This file is available to download from the website that I will leave the, a link in the show notes below. First of all, we have to configure the bits, pins, aliases, constants, and libraries. So the first one of all are the configuration bits, where the frequency of the oscillator, the master clear enable bit, and other registers are located. To configure them, go to the menu bar on production, set configuration bits, and you can change there the function of everyone. Then click on generate source code to output, copy the text and paste it on the code. Make sure to include the compiler library file by just adding this line. Then we have to define the global variables. Remember that all of these variables are global because they are required by multiple functions 
anywhere in the code. The, so they have to be accessed easily. All information of each traffic light is stored in every global variable, as well as the turn and sequence information. Macros are also useful in case we need to switch the pin later. Now let's take a look to timer zero. It says, each turn one traffic light is turned on and information related red, yellow and green is loaded to the LEDs. The information about the red light is stored in the global variable light red one, for example. And it has to be global so that it can be accessed from anywhere in the, in the program. The yellow light has also their own variable. The green light, however, does not have their own variable because it's just the opposite value of the red light. Every turn, using the variable turn, loads all the information from the variables and puts it on every device. On the traffic light 1, for example, it turns the device 1 only while the rest of them are turned off. The same happens with traffic light 2. Device 2 is turned on and the rest is not, and so on and so on. Now let's take a look to timer 1. It, what it does is each sequence turns on and off the red, yellow, and green lights of the traffic light. Each sequence determines the microcontroller which lights has to be turned on and off. For example, sequence 1 is about the red lights on one street to turn on and the green lights, all the green lights are turned off. And while the other street, all the green lights are turned on. These two values has to be reloaded again at the end of at the end of timer one interruption, so the one second count can keep on. And now the pins must be configured. First of all, the three registers determine which port is going to be an input and output we, um, in both port A and port C. Afterwards, uh, Ansel has to be cleared be, and so the old pins are treated as digital pins. Also, all the comparators has to be turned off. The CCP module has to be also turned off. And finally, the analog and digital module should be turned off, definitely. Afterwards, we have the timer zero and one configurations, respectively, but that's a long topic for another video. And also don't forget to enable the interrupts, the global interrupts at the end of the configuration function. And finally, you can see that, well, there is nothing here. The, the, all the program works with interruptions, but while one has to be put it anyway, because we have to make sure that this program keeps running. Every component has to be now placed in the breadboard as shown in the schematics. Also, the PKIT has to match the pins of the microcontroller. And thanks to the magic of addition, we can just skip all the process of assembling and see the final product. And here is a close-up view of the final circuit. And it works marvelously. The small blinking is due to the camera recording frequency. In real life, however, it looks like a continuous light. Well, that's all for this video. If you like it, click on the thumbs up button to share it with your peers. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video comes out. I'm Judy Tova. I will see you in the next one.